ค่ะนิกเลวิสค่ะขอบคุณจัสตัน Thank you for the intro. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Justin said, my name is Nicola Lewis. I'm the global CEO of Finecast, um, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here um, this morning. I want to start off by saying I feel very lucky to do what I do every day, and that's to work with brilliant people and to be surrounded by something new, something challenging, and something exciting. And that's because every day, my team and I. Work with clients who are either well on their way to total TV transformation, have embarked on the journey, or are working through what total TV transformation means for them as an advertiser and as a brand. <coughs> Excuse me. TV is great. TV is alive. TV delivers amazing results, and TV inspires. TV also has a wonderful serendipitous nature to it. It has the ability to deliver something that you were not expecting often, um, but that made you feel good, filled you with knowledge, left you content, and in some way, shape, or form, provided a value exchange for your time, and left you feeling emotionally connected to the content you were consuming. Because of this, and in order to maintain that emotional connection with you, whether that be content or advertising, TV must continue to innovate. And I think probably everyone in this room agrees with this. So, over the next 20 minutes, I wanted to explore how we, as an industry, can amplify TV's superpower, as I've called it, within the addressable world. <coughs> to do so. There we go. To do so, I want to start with a hypothesis, so something to prove out over time. Stepping back six months, I was fortunate enough to be part of a roundtable um, in Cannes, with 25 experts from around the world, from agencies, brands, media, and creative, talking about the golden era of TV. Rightly so, and during the roundtable, the question was asked: Are we in the golden era of TV? Interestingly, but in a positive way, the answer was no. We're not quite, but we could be. The opportunity is right there on our doorstep, and ready for the taking. And with that in mind, and obviously the theme of this morning: innovation, inspiration, and inclusion. I wanted to focus on testing the relationship between addressable, advanced TV. And creative messaging, and to explore how we, as an industry, should approach creative messaging to prove out the hypothesis behind me that addressable TV is facilitating a creative reawakening that will rebalance the performance equation. Again, in Cannes this year, Pisa Field, Karen Nelson Field, uh, and Orlando Wood introduced Triple Jeopardy. These are three interlinked, interlinked threats generated when marketers ignore attention as a credible goal. Simply put, attention is, an important, uh, is important as it is a gateway to building mental availability, which is central to long-term brand building. But three trends are threatening to damage that, and the first was budget, going to the sort of ads that aren't intended to build. That necessary attention that builds that emotional connection, media planning potentially not valuing platforms that build attention, which is putting measurement models such as such a share of voice and share of market um, in risk, and creative work that lacks elements that could gain broad attention, i.e., too focused on the left brain and then for geared to short-term effectiveness. All three of these threats can be neutralized, but together they can have a huge impact on effectiveness. So, at Group M and Finecast, we have been busily unpacking um, this triple jeopardy to better um, understand or better shape our collective understanding, and therefore shape our approach to planning, optimization, and measurement, extracting maximum effectiveness for our clients. More recently, we've been focused on the value of attention, and in May, Finecast and Amplified Intelligence set out to understand the levels of audience attention across TV content in the UK. 
When it comes to attention, TV punches above its weight versus other platforms, and that's a great thing to hear. What we found was that platform is the main driver of how much attention an ad can gain, um, not of creative messaging. The phrase attention elasticity was coined by Karen Nelson-Field, who, again, I know many of you in the room will be um, aware of. She's, she's a great, great person. Meaning there's only so much attention available on a given platform. OTT is the highest platform for attention within the TV platform real estate. Addressability and creative messaging can yield more attention within the elasticity spectrum. And of course, active attention is positively correlated with more sales for advertisers. So a provocative question on the slide, are we leaving brand performance on the table? I think so, yes. And I think as an industry, we can do more. Over the last five years and as an industry, what we've done very well is to demonstrably demonstrate effectiveness and value for our clients via addressable TV across a wide range of sectors and categories. And that is value that has primarily been derived through the optimization of the media placement through the clever and scalable use of data and technology. As an industry, we have done an excellent job of optimizing the media placement. And this has been across the entirety of the sales funnel from brand uplift to sales uplift, footfall to website engagement metrics. But when you start to explore effectiveness data sets further, you uncover a universal truth. In all instances, the biggest driver of effectiveness is creative. And that is typically ranking in number one or number two in terms of importance when you do look at these um, uh, effectiveness data sets. And that's because there is a significant impact and improved response to personalized creative messaging by elevating that potential lost emotion and engaging both the left and the right brain. Um, it is here and, and, what, and it allows us to tell amazing brand stories on the TV screen that captivate our audiences. And so here is an interesting fact. Um, we did a bit of soul searching at Finecast on this hypothesis. And in 2022, Finecast will, on a global scale, have served over 11 billion addressable TV impressions. And here's the fact. Under 1% of those have any form of creative optimization. To put that into context, that's across 14 markets, reaching 325 million addressable households. And honestly, I expect we're not an exception, and other partners who work in this space will see comparable results. And so the opportunity is here, and the opportunity is immense. To have less than 1% of creatively optimized media in a medium that is arguably the best creative canvas out there, the opportunity. So we've set ourselves a lofty goal. When I say we, I say my team. Thank you, team. Some of them are here today. Set ourselves a lofty goal, and that is by 2026, every single impression we serve uh, to our clients will not only have media optimization, but also creative optimization. And so this represents a collective challenge for us all with two problems to tackle. Firstly, as an industry, you could argue that we aren't do doing enough and that the lack of scalable tech solutions to enable creative messaging, whether that be clients, broadcasters, tech companies, et cetera, has previously inhibited our progress. And secondly, in the age of addressability, we need to think about resonance, so right brain, more mental availability, long-term connection, and relevance, left brain, rational thinking, and short-term impact. But the good news is, is that we are discussing it in various pockets of the globe. And there's a recognition that we have an opportunity to do more, to enhance, um, to enable enhanced creative messaging. As you can see, the recent headlines from around the globe calling out for creative messaging solutions do show that the tide is changing. So what does good look like and how do we formulate an approach or a framework, if you like, to think about creative messaging in addressable TV? 
And I want to do this through the lens of some of the great examples of creative work from around the world. It would be totally remiss of me not to showcase in a presentation about creative messaging and harnessing the superpower of TV, creative itself. So I want to start with a dynamic audio um, delivery campaign via Channel 4, which has been edited based on the location of where the ad is being delivered to TV screens, in this instance, um, Newcastle. It's decision time. We've got up to 30% off lots of Newcastle's favourite restaurants, like Meat Stuck, Acropolis and Zapatista. So what will it be? Deliveroo presents Decision Time. You want everything. But what's it going to be this time? Pizza. Yes. I love you. Scrap that. Burger's in town. Come and dance, you delicious meaty beauty. Chicken. Go on, have a think bite. Rain down, you crisp. Oh, Tim's ordered noodles. Decision made. Order now. Deliveroo. Food, we get it. Uh, and thank you to Channel 4 for sharing that great example and with us always doing sort of great work around um, addressable creative. Um, so this notion of harnessing the power of creative messaging really came to life for me recently at a WPP leadership um, conference, and that was a global conference, um, the Group M Global Chief Creative Officer, Rob Riley, who again, I'm sure many of you know, who is absolutely awesome, highlighted some amazing examples of creative work, during which he noted that technology is the key to creative success. But he stressed that it's important to have the right people, the right partners, and the right platform, and that we need to constantly upskill our people, and that we need to expand our partnerships ecosystem to build systems and frameworks to, live, to deliver value through creative effectiveness, whilst, importantly, growing and learning together. And by doing this, we create a must-have equation, and that is creativity plus technology plus humanity, as a minimum, a baseline, if you like. But to create the real magic and impact in addressable TV, this approach can further um, be advanced and enhanced by media integration, nimbleness, and now empirical evidence, um, which is the really, really important part. So let's start by adding media, in, uh, media integration to this equation. We get an amazing example um, in a Cadbury celebration campaign, which was an execution awarded a titanium lion in Cannes this year, and it was created by a brilliant wave maker team um, in India. Um, Cadbury celebration used AI technology to gift celebrity ads, turning a very well-known Indian celebrity into a small business ambassador during the Indian festival season, Diwali. A brilliant creative concept and one that would undoubtedly shine when you transpose it onto the big screen. And for us in India, leveraging the exponential growth on CTV in India um, right now. Hero <laughs> Lagraun. <laughs> इस दिवाली आप भी ना अपने पास वाले फैशन ऑफ एम्पोरियम से ही कपड़ों की शॉपिंग करना और फिर एम्पायर फुटवेयर नाम तो सुना होगा जूते वहीं से लेना ताकि वो भी खुशी से ना जुटे चलो मेहमान आ गए और हम क्या लग रही हो मासी अपना स्टाइलिश चश्मा बगल वाले हेवन आई ऑप्टिशन से ही लेना और सिद्धि विनायक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स से लेटेस्ट स्मार्टफोन खरीदकर धमाकेदार सेल्फी पोस्ट करना क्या कर रहे हो मीठा लाए कि नहीं लाए हो ना यार अपने पास वाले रोशन किराना से आप भी अपना मीठा वहीं से लेना ताकि आपके साथ उनकी दिवाली भी मीठी हो जाए हमारे आसपास की जो दुकानें हैं उनकी दिवाली भी तो मीठी होनी चाहिए ना Growth in business, 35%. Ads viewed, 30 plus million. Um, really, really good PR and um, a huge amount of ads created. Again, thinking about what does that look like on the big screen in India? 
So the next layer of the equation is to add nimbleness. To illustrate this, I've got um, two examples. The first is Volvo in Belgium, um, an answer to the cancelled Brussels Motor Show, um, which was Volvo's biggest sales momentum of the year, accounting for 30% of yearly sales targets. Volvo rethought its approach to displaying and selling cars, and they created the Volvo Street Configurator. The first app ever used to advance AI to recognize the configuration of every single Volvo, Volvo the consumer sees. It's a concept that perfectly links physical attraction with digital commitment, using the first encounter with a Volvo to kickstart the purchase process. And why am I showing you this case study? Again, in the last 12 months, we've observed technological advancements that now enable brands to bridge the TV viewing experience with consumer or commerce experiences. And this is fantastic new fertile ground. Finally, we add empirical evidence to the equation, evidence that allows us to really test out the hypothesis I laid out at the beginning of the presentation, and that helps us as an industry create extraordinary work that delivers to that new golden age of TV. And there are plenty of reasons to be optimistic. What you see here are addressable messaging benchmarks for programmatic social developed by Group M's Wavemaker Agency across all major categories. And that's both low value, high frequency, high value, low frequency products and services. What we have observed consistently is that when we're able to bring optimized media and creative messaging together, we see significant incremental gains on campaign performance with an average uplift across all sectors. And so we can start to prove out effectiveness in creative messaging using an equation that incorporates creativity, technology, humanity, media integration, nimbleness, and proof. Um, to bring this to life, again, I just wanted to share a great example of creative messaging um, out of our German uh, market. In Germany, KFC wanted to showcase new products for vegetarian meat lovers and families to be shown to viewers located within a determined radius of one of the 177 outlets in Germany. KFC's geographic targeting strategy used local and product-based data feeds. The creative messaging was adapted and dynamically targeted to the viewer's location. With Finecast DCO and the right customer segmentation strategy, the product production effort for personalized messaging with dynamic creative elements was seamlessly reduced, executing 523 individual 30-second ads, 20 seconds of which dynamically optimized, and 10 seconds the brand advertising creative and the results speak for themselves. Jetzt neu bei KFC. Chicken, auch ohne Chicken. Probiert jetzt unsere legendären Veggie-Varianten. some more upbeat music in that one, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I just realized that, it's very dramatic. Um, okay, so what does the future state um, look like? Our roles within addressable TV, they change. To think about how best to use technology to help evolve a creative, creative asset via AI with partners like Satalia, panel testing with effectiveness optimization with partners like System One, and I met John um, Evans from System One earlier, and the increased use of DCO technology with partners such as Choreograph Create to make the pre-optimized ad more personalized through the generation of multiple versions. Using machine learning and AI to predict, annotate, and recommend, and optimization capabilities to create early stage strategy recommendations, pre-optimization, dynamic creative, and then onto shoppable ads and QR codes. So next step is the creation of global POCs, uh, proof of concepts for us in key addressable markets, US, Canada, UK, Germany, India, testing and learning as we go to achieve that lofty goal that we set for 2026. Importantly, this is not about changing the approach to creativity in TV, rather about optimizing the creative asset for the addressable media placement. And so, I know I'm out of time, 
I can feel Justin there ticking, doing his, uh, his watch thing. So with all of this in mind, what do I want you to take away from this? Essentially, lean into innovative technologies, continue to encourage your clients, brands, and colleagues just to test and learn, combining optimized media and optimized creative to create better advertising experience for brands and viewers, and let's help balance that equation. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. You're not going to get away with it that easily. Um, no, just very quickly, this might be a daft question, but what do you mean practically by creative optimization? What, what does that actually mean? And I, and I might be a bit daft by not knowing that, but... Does... Oh, creative, so optimizing the asset, but typically in the, in, in, in the pre-production period, so optimizing the asset based on location, based on audience, yeah. um, based on demographics, based on whatever data sets you have. Yeah. that you know that you want to target a certain audience. So, so it's essentially taking the asset, pre-optimizing it creatively, and then putting it sort of in the flow of, of So of you're saying aspect. in the past, clients have been taking their classic 30 second and then giving the it to you for addressable yep. uh, executions. And you're saying no, because it's way more effective to localize saying, the language and all that sort of we're stuff. We're saying that's great because we obviously have the infrastructure and we've created uh, you know, the, the infrastructure to have a, a, a significant addressable business serving 11 billion impressions. Yeah. The point is, where do we go next? And if you think that of that 11 billion, by the end of 2022, under 1% has a form of creative optimization that's talking to the household you know, in, a, in a more targeted, not creepy, household way, yeah. That's a good thing. You know, that's more opportunity for clients. Okay, that's a good way to finish. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give uh, Nick Lewis a massive hand. Thank you for that. Thank you for the question.